Hey, how you doing? So I got a question put to me. As low-code and no-code solutions become more of an option for small businesses, do web developers need to, number one, niche down for specific higher-end work with certain types of businesses that need custom functionality that the web builders can't do? Or two, become more of an all-rounder who does everything for business. The developer needs to become a marketer creating a web presence or building a website is only one part of uh, what they provide a business. They might do SEO, social media, short TikTok videos, product photography. I hear that many business owners are not interested in a website alone, but they are interested in a website as part of a sales funnel process to begin to bring customers in to learn about the purchase and to learn about and purchase their products. Your thoughts? Thanks. So good question. So both are viable. The days of just building a website that does not and nothing else, I think those are fading. Although you may find a few gigs, there's always exceptions. I think when you can come into with option two, where you're kind of a web designer, web presence, uh, contractor, consultant, where not only you build a website, you may implement their social media campaign, help them, help them with their campaigns or help them at least to set up their social media sites tied in, help them with e-commerce impl implementations. Uh, I can see WordPress fitting into this as well. These are all very viable, lots of jobs there. He's talking about low-code, no-code solutions, uh, has become more of an option. Do you need to niche down to specific higher-end work with certain types of businesses that need custom functionalities that builders can't do? I think it's just a couple. It's a, it's a couple of things. It's a couple of things where in the situation where the no-code platform could be used, and you use it, right? You use it. It's a judgment call. Sometimes you may say, okay, the no-code platform will be good for this, but what future uh, functionality implementation that you may need, can that no-code platform uh, handle that, what, what the client may need six months from now or a year from now? Very hard to determine. Generally speaking, when you're starting as a freelancer, you're going to be dealing with the simpler projects. You're going to be dealing with the WordPress installations, the SEO and the, the web marketing uh, type of stuff. And that could be very, very WordPress. That could be very, very viable. You can make a lot of money in that space as a freelancer if you develop really good workflows. That's the key to it all. In terms of developing custom solutions, whether you niche down, yes, that's a viable option as well. So for example, let's say you find that there's a lot of, I don't know, independent coffee shops out there who will need a certain type of site that does a certain type of thing. Maybe you got all these independent coffee shops who are producing their own beans, their own blends, and they like to sell them online. So you may put together a solution for independent coffee shops, that, that uh, a solution being an app or a web app or a no-code app or a no-code based app that allows you to deliver what the typical independent coffee shop may want. So that is a very viable option as well. So I've seen that. I've done that kind of thing in the past. Again, that's where you you having an understanding of a particular industry can come in handy. So for example, in my mentoring group, I had somebody who was in the trucking industry and had identified a particular need that the trucking companies uh, typically have. So he developed an app from scratch to address those needs. And then you could take that and scale that out, license it out to different trucking, trucking, trucking companies. So for me, point number two, when you're niching down to a specific higher-end work, that to me suggests almost a SaaS-based business. SaaS is, is short for software as a service. So that to me would suggest that you're heading in that, in that direction. Ultimately, in terms of the software game, if you're into a SaaS business, that could be extremely lucrative and profitable for many reasons. But typically, SaaS-based businesses are the hardest to produce. I've done that as well. Uh, it takes a lot more time. Um, it takes a lot more expertise in the industry that you're jumping into. So I don't see the low-code and no-code solutions as ultimately as competition. 
I just see them as tools that you may or, mar- or you may or may not implement depending on what you see in the marketplace. That's all. So it's both viable. Ultimately, and to conclude this video, ultimately, you're going to figure out what works for you. Everybody's different. I've seen people do fantastic creating custom solutions in a particular niche, like the coffee shop people. Um, and I've seen people do very well just producing uh, small business e-commerce websites for other uh, for their group of clients that they happen to have in their industry. Big part about being an entrepreneur is being able to uh, f- go with the flow and to f- to adjust according to what your clients need. And ultimately, it will work itself out that way. You just have to be flexible. Again, as I've always said, and I'll continue to say, knowledge of the fundamentals is key to all this so that you can pivot more easily. If you have a good, solid understanding of the fundamentals, you can pivot pretty quickly. If you don't, you're in trouble. Thank you.